Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Peter Rich. I'm a professor of instructional psychology and technology at Brigham Young University, where I teach courses on instructional design and how to teach elementary school teachers how to code. Uh, so to start off, I always like to ask who are the people that we are talking about. So a little bit about the teachers. In the pre-survey that they filled out at their first professional development training, there were 29 teachers who completed the survey. 19 of those completed the post-survey. And you can see they're actually a fairly young group of teachers uh, at the beginning uh, when we look at their average coding experience. And when I look at the end, their average coding experience, um, you can see that uh, that has increased by more than a year, um, indicating that it was a lot of younger teachers that you had at the beginning that uh, didn't uh, complete at the end. And you can see that with their overall teaching experience as well. So it looks like we have a lot of the maybe more veteran uh, experienced teachers um, stuck through the training from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, and we lost some of the novice teachers. When I do break that down by the teacher role, you can see that the vast majority of these teachers are classroom teachers. Uh, and then you've got a, you know, a TA, a media specialist, as well as uh, two technology teachers who participated in the post survey as well. So getting down to what was the teacher's experience like in uh, training with Boot Up this past year, we asked the question, what their confidence was to teach or what their feelings were about teaching coding both before and after participating in the boot up training. And there were kind of three groups of responses that I saw. So in this first group, you see people who were very nervous. Uh, they didn't have a lot of experience. They didn't have a lot of confidence. So you can see people saying things, um, I was a little nervous about teaching coding because I felt as if I didn't know much about it. And then after the training, that same teacher says, I'm a little more confident in the process of sharing coding. So they went from being a little nervous to a little, little confident. Uh, somebody who started off diminished, they couldn't fathom how to do that, and now they're actually excited. Uh, they had little experience in coding, and they lacked confidence, and now they're more comfortable. They were overwhelmed. They're more comfortable. I can't do this to, I can do this with some confidence. Still need some help. Uh, so this is what we see as we look at these, this group, the, the group that went from being uh, lacking confidence at all to having a little bit of confidence and feeling a little bit more prepared. Uh, the second group is a group that just indicated they didn't have any experience. It wasn't in the picture. They were ignorant of uh, coding. Uh, and you can see here very simply stating things. It wasn't in the picture, didn't even think about it. And now those same teachers are saying things like, uh, I have a greater sense of it and I love it. And they're excited to actually teach coding. And uh, looking at that veteran group that has been teaching a bit of coding already, you see there's a, a third of these teachers, just about a third of these teachers that said that it's very engaging, they're interested in coding, they were curious about all the concepts. So there is this group that already was excited about teaching coding. So the question is, uh, what was their experience like and did they find value in the training? And you can see here the teachers are saying it was very engaging beginning, but I feel even more confident now. I was interested and now I'm more excited and interested. I was curious, now I'm much more comfortable and excited. So this ex the word excited keeps coming up, which is exciting, right? Uh, when we hear from the teachers about their experience that they had with boot up training this year, overall it's positive whether or not they started from a position of lack of confidence or a position of ignorance or a position of excitement. All three groups tended to say that they uh, are more confident, interested, and excited in coding after having participated in boot up professional development in 23-24. So we want to get down to what was their experience like in the classroom. This is where I see teachers' confidence start to grow a lot. Uh, is has to do with how often they're teaching coding. As you can see in here, the vast majority of these teachers are teaching about once a month or less. Uh, there's actually a good portion who said that they only taught it really one time a year. And so this is an area where if I were looking at where we could improve, I would look at ways to establish expectations and the structure to put in place so that teachers could teach at least regularly once a week. Uh, once they do that, I think we'll see a lot more growth um, in their confidence to teach coding, although obviously they're excited and have indicated that their confidence is growing. Uh, their knowledge of coding at this point may be less uh, because uh, they're teaching um, not quite as often uh, as they might need to be teaching in order to build up the, uh, the skill 
that they need to teach coding. Uh, but when we look at integration, this is actually uh, really positive as well. So there's two ways of looking at how teachers integrate coding. One is by using the mean, which is the average that we often think of when we think of average, uh, just adding up everybody's um, numbers for how often they report teaching uh, an integrated lesson with coding in each of the different subject areas. And you can see each of the subject areas has been touched. Uh, this is by each teacher, right? So language arts, social science, science and math. So the core uh, is getting integrated with coding, which is fantastic. When I look at the median, I think the median gives a better picture of what everybody is doing. Uh, you don't have a person who, like a, a media specialist or a technology teacher's you know, who's maybe teaching this a lot more often, pulling up that mean, which is what happens with the mean and the median. We weigh everybody's uh, answers the same and look right in the middle. And even when we do that, we see that language arts, science, and mathematics, everybody's taught an integrated lesson in each of these areas. So the fact that they are teaching maybe monthly, uh, but still, on average, uh, teaching uh, across the curriculum means that integration is a priority, and that's the way that coding is being taught at Bessemer. So the, here's another uh, area where we might look and say well, there's a lot that happens around teachers teaching coding in the classroom. And uh, we ask the question how well they feel supported by the different parties. And anything above a 7 is good, above an 8 is great, above a 9 is amazing. Um, so you look here and we see that teachers, they do feel uh, supported by boot up and that's good. Um, the next closest support that they feel is by the instructional coach. Uh, it's not as high as I would hope, uh, but it's uh, at least above that in that six to seven range, which is good but needs improvement. Um, I would say these other numbers are actually areas for concern. If I were to look at these and say the teachers are not feeling supported by others at their school, their lowest area of support is their principal. Uh, and that suggests to me that they might feel like they're not being given the time um, to teach coding in the classroom. Uh, this might help explain the how often coding is being taught in the classroom, where it's monthly or less. Um, if they're not given the structure and the support uh, to be able to teach that in the classroom. So um, again, that's just me uh, conjecturing based off of these numbers and based off of the other things that I uh, saw in terms of how frequently they're teaching coding. Uh, but this is definitely an area that I would look into where the teachers have reported they uh, feel low support from other teachers at their school, definitely their principal, uh, the district, and students' families. So uh, looking at the support structures around the teacher is important uh, to be able to see uh, if they're going to be able to continue doing the things that uh, we're asking them to do. So I asked the teachers about their successes and their challenges, and they wrote back in open-ended responses to this. Uh, and then with those responses, I coded those responses into different categories. And you can see here, uh, the most common success, are actually three, a three-way tie for the most common thing that I saw when teachers talked about success. Student interest, which is often the most common success. Teachers talk about how excited students are, how interested they are in, in teaching coding and the engagement. That all falls under student interest. But we have just as many teachers who observed that student ability was a major success. And this deals with the fact that teachers or students can now do things that they couldn't have done before uh, and that they're understanding coding. The other major success that teachers uh, reported as one of their big successes is their own ability to, to code. So they saw a lot of success in their own um, confidence to teach coding and that's where they felt that there was more success. When we look at the challenges, uh, the the biggest challenge is their own ability as well. So even though a lot of teachers have said my biggest success is that I can do this, now there were still a fair number of teachers who actually said my biggest challenge is I felt like I couldn't do this. Um, and I feel like that was a, a stepping stone for me or a challenge that I had to get over. So like I said, still room for improvement as teachers are increasing in their confidence to teach coding. Some of them are feeling like they've, they've got it and a lot of them are feeling like they, uh, that is their biggest challenge, right? And the second biggest challenge is time. Uh, that's a common biggest challenge, which especially since we have uh, so many of these uh, teachers are classroom teachers, just feeling like I just don't have the time to do this in the classroom. I don't know how I'm gonna find the time uh, with the other things that I'm doing. So that's their, their biggest challenges, is finding the time um, and feeling like they're not uh, 
capable to be able to teach the coding. When we look at their pre-post scores, uh, this is these scores come from about 30 questions that um, group into these different categories of beliefs about teaching coding. Uh, the goal is to see if we can get teachers to a five on uh, this six-point scale. This is These are Likert-type questions where teachers agree or disagree with certain statements. So, for example, the value questions say things like, uh, I believe all students can learn how to code or should learn to code, or I believe students should learn to code in elementary school or they'll need it for the future. And you can see teachers actually started off with a pretty high valuation. Um, a six is strongly agree, five is agree, four is somewhat agree and then we have the disagree on the three two and one somewhat disagree uh, gr disagree and strongly disagree teachers started off with pretty good valuation already um, above that five so they were started off believing in the importance of teaching coding which is great and they got even higher there which is awesome uh, for their self-efficacy for their computational thinking they started off kind of halfway between the somewhat agree and agree this is their own ability to think computationally sans coding. So questions like, um, I can find patterns in data, I can break down a problem into uh, a larger problem into smaller problems. Um, those are the types of questions that get a teacher's computational thinking. And you can see they actually ended up right, right about at that five mark, which is what we're aiming for, which is fantastic. Um, as far as teachers coding self-efficacy go, they started off about as neutral as you can get on this scale. There's no neutral answer, but those questions together averaged out to kind of a neutral. Um, their confidence with coding is uh, kind of neutral, right? Uh, but it ended up halfway between that somewhat agree and agree. So uh, that's actually really good growth as we look at this, especially considering how often they were teaching coding, uh, which isn't as often. So uh, good growth in this area. Still room to go to, to reach that five to six range, uh, but they're heading in the right direction there. Uh, and teacher self-efficacy for teaching is sort of a, started in a similar spot, a little bit higher than coding, but not much. Uh, but they ended also uh, almost uh, to that five range, which is fantastic. So this shows the teacher's confidence to teach coding and their self-efficacy for actually teaching it uh, has grown uh, to the point where they agree that they can uh, find the resources to help students. Um, they can help students debug their code. And they know some of the pedagogies that they need uh, to be able to teach coding in the classroom. So we asked them three questions, just what was their confidence on a one to 10 scale uh, to teach coding at the beginning? And you can see that confidence started pretty low at a 4.28. Um, that's uh, not a lot of confidence to teach coding, but that grew uh, to just above a seven, right? So they got above that seven line. That's a 66% growth rate, uh, which is fantastic, right? So you see again in the numbers here, uh, supporting what teachers were saying, uh, with their words earlier that uh, their confidence has grown and they have a little more confidence. Again, there's room for growth at this point uh, to still get, you know, in, uh, into that eight, nine range, but above a seven from a 4.28 is really good growth in terms of their confidence and uh, their excitement. Uh, they started off pretty excited, almost at an eight and ended up above a nine, got even more excited as they went through this. That's a really good sign because that's the type of thing that encourages teachers to continue coding as they move forward uh, if they're excited for it and they've got the confidence and then their anxiety started off below a five so not too bad uh, to begin with it's not a super a lot of anxiousness or anxiety but that went down even lower as well so all of these things are pointing in the right direction uh, for teachers attitudes for coding so the last section I want to talk about what was their experience with boot up and how do they evaluate their boot up experience um, we asked some of these questions as part of the Amazon Future Engineer program. Uh, they asked these of all of their uh, people who participate in their program. One is just how satisfied were they on a 1 to 5 scale. And you can see teachers rated that at a 4.7, which is uh, really good uh, on a 5 point scale. So overall high satisfaction. Uh, how satisfied did they think their students were with boot up? That's a little bit lower, but still 4.4 .4 is, is decent as you look at their satisfaction. and. Uh, probably more important is uh, whether or not their students feel like they belong in CS. And their teachers, uh, Bessemer teachers evaluation there is that it was at a 4.7 out of 5. So again, really good as you look at uh, how well um, and how satisfied they were with their boot up experience. I want to talk about this uh, last indicator, which is a net promoter score. 
Uh, this is out of 10, and so we ask how likely teachers were to recommend boot up to a peer. If you just take that average out of 10, it was at 9.5, which is really good. Um, but then if you calculate the net promoter score, the way that you calculate net promoter is you uh, look at the 9s and 10s, and those are considered promoters. Uh, 7 and 8 are considered passive, which means people who like it, but they're not going out and actively promoting it. And 6 and below are the detractors. And so the way we calculate a net promoter score is you take the percentage of teachers who are promoters, those nines and tens, and you subtract the percentage of teachers who are detractors from this. Well, an interesting thing, uh, when I look at the net promoters um, in this group, uh, all of those who answered the uh, survey at the end, um, there were no detractors. Uh, so literally uh, 14 of the 16 who answered this question at the end were a 9 or a 10 on their uh, how likely they were to recommend boot up to a peer. And so that's 14 out of 16 is 87.5% minus 0%. That's, that's incredible, uh, a net promoter score. Now again, uh, not a lot of people uh, answering this, so I take it for what it's worth, but the teachers uh, were, are highly likely to recommend this experience to other teachers when we look at that, especially considering there were no detractors in this group. So we also asked the teachers about online versus in person. Uh, this was a little interesting to me as I dug into the data on this one because I had several teachers tell me that uh, um, the virtual training wasn't offered to them. But I did have about five teachers give me a number for how many of the online trainings they attended. So I'm not sure um, what to make of that. It looks like there may have been some teachers who maybe were able to participate in some online trainings but that in general, the, uh, the teachers in Bessemer didn't do the online trainings this time. So that's why I put a question mark with the boot up online trainings attended. The average was two and the median was two. Um, but uh, I don't know that that was true for all of the teachers, um, that they all uh, were to do it. There were a lot who just didn't answer that question in terms of online because they, they didn't have an online experience. Uh, that being said, we did ask them their modality preference. Do they prefer online or in person? Overwhelmingly, teachers indicated that they liked the in-person trainings. Uh, even if they didn't have uh, an online training, uh, they said they liked in-person trainings because that's just uh, caters to their learning style and they prefer the hands-on nature of the uh, in-person training. So you have uh, quotes like this where teachers said things like, I like to do hands-on training so I can actually take part into uh, during the activity instead of watching or listening to it. So that was the general uh, feeling is the teachers really liked uh, in-person training that they got. Uh, you can see overall, again, everybody, almost everybody is a promoter, which is just incredible. So overall, looking at Bessemer's experience this year, uh, the teachers really enjoyed it. Um, their confidence grew, uh, like I said, you know, 66%, which is a fantastic growth in the, in the uh, confidence. And you can see they actually did well across most of the metrics. A few areas for concern that I would look at is uh, just how often they're teaching coding and how well they feel supported uh, by their colleagues uh, around them. That includes other teachers, the principal especially, and the district. Um, that's where uh, I would look to, to strengthen things this next year and to say, okay, well, what can we do to help teachers feel more supported and to be able to teach coding a little bit more often? Uh, but outside of those things, uh, things look really good as I look at Bessemer's data. So hopefully that was useful to you and uh, have fun as you continue to code and to learn to code.